because he's promised to never leave us, nor forsake us. And his word's true. His word is true. God is good. God is good all the time. He put a song. Can I get an amen, church? Yeah. Amen. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to save us, and whoever believes in him will live forever.
Hallelujah. Why don't you stand up and greet your neighbor and say, God loves you. Good morning, Waterbury Church family. You may be seated. Thanks for joining together. Backyard Worship, Waterbury for Methodist Church. Uh, today's a special, amazing day. We have a couple getting baptized. And uh, we have uh, some beautiful young ladies with us to share some song. And Ella is one of the ones getting baptized. So we thank you, Ella, for bringing your friends and uh, sharing a couple songs with us. And then we're going to hear from her and Nate. They're going to share their testimony about baptism. And right after the morning worship, we're going to go down to the river and do the baptism. So, ladies, go ahead. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Ella Harris. Um, my life before Jesus Christ was filled with anxiety, and I was constantly anxious about what people thought of me, about silly stuff like my grades, and like what my future would look like. So, I, and honestly about everything else, I didn't take time to slow down and just listen to what God had to say and about what his plan was for me. I first accepted Jesus into my life a few years ago. So I was laying in bed and I just felt compelled to pray. So I had my first conversation with God and I've prayed ever since, every night since. Yeah. And um, last year I went to my friend Grace's baptism and I listened to her testimony and I was really moved by her words. And then I watched her be baptized, and I remember thinking how amazing it was, and how everyone around me was singing Amazing Grace, and I started crying. <laughs> and then I was like, I, this is what I want to do. So I, uh, I wanted to build a relationship with God, and I wanted to learn more, and I wanted to be baptized. And ever since that day, I've grown in my relationship with God, and it hasn't always been easy, and I've overcome a lot of challenges and obstacles. and. I'm no longer as anxious as I used to be, and I'm a happier person. Amen. I feel more at peace, and I've been more open and comfortable since I've started coming to church out every week. And I look forward to reading the Bible every day and learning more. And my favorite verse comes from Isaiah 43, 2. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Did you catch that Grace who was singing earlier was baptized last year? Ella was here, saw Grace get baptized, said, I want that too. I wonder how many people will be touched by your testimony and your baptism. So next year I'll stand here, because of Ella, I got baptized. I saw it happen. So, Nathan. Hello everybody, I'm Nathan Schmidt, and my life before Jesus, uh, I felt like I was disobedient and did not really care about others' feelings, and when other people like I wanted to be the center of attention in the room I didn't I didn't care for the other people's feelings and I came to Jesus as my personal savior is when I started coming to church with my grandparents every Sunday when I came to know Jesus Christ as my personal savior is when in the last six months when I realized that I wanted to accept him into my heart so and how my life has changed my life has changed with me being more respectful to not only myself but to others around me i also have changed by not judging people off their appearance and getting to know them with jesus christ my favorite scripture verse is jeremiah 29 11 which says for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you hope and a future Amen. Let's pray for these days. Father, we thank you for uh, Ella's testimony and what you have done in her heart and her life, and Nate as well. And Father, we know that you have great plans for them in the days ahead. So we pray that you protect them, watch over them. But Father, we thank you for this decision and this time in their life. They'll never forget this day of being baptized. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. We draw near to God. The Bible says he's going to draw near to us. So let's just sing this to him right now.
Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Have your way in me. This is our desire. That you would have your way in us, in each of us. It would take away our worry and our frustrations, our fears. And we would see your plan that you have for us. So, Father, we pray that you would have your way in us. That we would give up our rights and give up everything to say, Father, you have me. You have all of me. And I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my desire. I give you all my relationship. I give it to you. Because I know that you can do so much better with it than I ever could. Father, be with our men and women that serve around the world so we can worship in freedom today. Be with our missionaries as they share the good news of the gospel. Be with those whose homes have just been destroyed from storm and fire and all kinds of craziness of our world. Father, let them turn to you in times of trouble, in times of disaster. Let their hearts be turned towards you. Father, we pray for the Evett family as uh, Glenn's brother has passed away and Father, we pray that you'd encourage and walk with them and strengthen them. We pray for uh, Howard's mom as she recovers from her procedure. Father, that you continue to be with her and strengthen her day by day. And thank you that Jamie's dad is home after his motorcycle accident. Father, that you would uh, let him rest in your arms and heal during this time. Father, we pray that today you would be with us in such an incredible way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The children can be dismissed with Miss Cindy. A disciple of Jesus is a learner, learning to love like Jesus, walk like Jesus, live like Jesus, to be like Jesus to others. That's our heart's desire, isn't it? Is to be that as well. Last week we talked about uh, Jesus gives a parable of the soil, soils, the four types of soils, and. Uh, the Word of God is the seed that is planted that we stole from uh, Rick as he wrote in the newspaper for us. So we stole his words and stuff. And we asked the question, how do you keep your soil rich, pure? How do you keep your heart in good shape? We gave some great examples of reading the Word and prayer and uh, studying the Bible and serving others and fellowship and ministry and loving others and giving. And great examples of how to keep your heart in good shape for that. Today's Labor Day, I guess Labor Day weekend, tomorrow's actual Labor Day. So what else to talk about labor? So let's talk about labor just for a moment. It's not the kind that women have. I'm not used to a microphone. How does a disciple of Jesus fit into labor? I mean, what's it look like? How should a disciple of Jesus and labor go together? What's that really... If you're a disciple of Jesus, does that mean you have a free pass and you should not work? No. Okay. Matter of fact, it's probably just the opposite. It, it's, a disciple of Jesus should probably be the best workers, should be the most faithful, should be the most reliable type workers, most dependable. Proverbs uh, 10.4 says like this, lazy people are soon poor and hard workers get rich. I think a disciple of Jesus should not be a lazy person. Uh, and I think I'm going to share some scriptures with you to help you with that as well. Another proverb is uh, Proverbs 6. You know, sometimes we, we all often think and we read the word of God and we think, well, it says this, but I wish God would just give me a good example. I wish God would just give me a practical example that I could grab onto. So if you have your Bibles or your phone, you can turn to the Proverbs 6. I think some of this is in your bulletin as well. Proverbs 6, take a lesson from the ants. So, so here, God has given us some instructions. Take a lesson from you, ants, you lazy bone. Learn from the way and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor to rule over them, to make them work, 
their labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? Are you a lazy bone person? Are you just that kind of person? We can learn from the ants, learn from them, work hard, store up for the winter. Winter's coming, you're gonna need it, store it up. Get started, get working. So the ants is a great example for us. You ever watch ants colonies or ants in the driveway? All that, all that kind of fun stuff to do. Uh, they're always busy. They don't just, you don't, how many people just see ants sitting around? No, they're always moving. They're always moving. So we have this great example. So Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica, and he says like this, For everyone from we, we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. For those who are unwilling to work, they shall not eat. Hmm, that's pretty strong, Paul, isn't it? And I know there's a huge difference between unwilling and unable, right? There's a, a big difference between those two very things. But I think a disciple of Jesus, we're pretty sure that uh, should not be a lazy person. Uh, maybe you work 40 hours, maybe you can't work 40 hours because of your health, maybe you can only work 20 and volunteer at the school or the food pantry or someplace else, but being lazy should not be an option for a disciple of Jesus. Uh, flying the couch, playing video games, watching soap operas, and eating bonbons all day, I hope I didn't step on any toes, unless that's your job, unless you're getting paid to eat those bonbons, or unless you're getting paid to test that couch, or unless you're getting paid to play that video game, uh, we should be working, right? Uh, ever think about uh, the, you know, who we're accountable to when it comes to work? And so often we think of our boss as the one that's in charge of us, and our boss is the one that kind of keeps track of us and our boss. But really, our work is unto the Lord. It's just not to our boss. And sometimes uh, I've seen people and I've heard people. As a matter of fact, I had a family member who worked at GM at, at one time, and he would almost brag about how he would come in late and his buddy would punch him in. And he would leave early and his buddy would punch him out and they would take turns on who would show up that day and be on time and the other one would not. And I thought, wow, is that really how a disciple of Jesus should do it? We are accountable to the Lord, not just to our boss or just that type of thing. And, and think about those in school, the, those that are still students. How much effort do you put into your schoolwork? How much effort do you put forth at your school or your place of work as you study? But our reason for working hard should not be our boss or our teacher, but the Lord. That should be the reason. Uh, look at Colossians 3. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working on the Lord, not for human masters, since you know you will re receive an inheritance from the Lord as reward. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that you serve. We don't work for that guy, we work for the Lord. Don't be discouraged uh, when you don't get that raise or that promotion or you think you should have got that better job or whatever the case may be. Our reward is from the Lord. We have a great inheritance. It is the Lord himself that we are serving. Sure, your boss might write the check, your teacher might grade your paper, but really our work is unto the Lord. We are to work hard. We shouldn't be a lazy boy, a lazy bones type person. And, and the one thing is being lazy when it comes to our job, but it's another thing when we get lazy when it comes to working for the Lord. How often do we work hard at our job, but we don't do anything for the Lord? Romans 12, 11, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Enthusiastically, with a, with a zealous spirit, serving the Lord, being excited about doing what God's called you to do. And whether it's mowing the lawn or painting the, the house or whatever God's called you to do, do it enthusiastically. The Message Bible says, don't get burned out. Keep yourself fueled in a flame. Be alert servants to your master. Don't be lazy. Don't be slothful. Don't be idle. Put forth a effort. Our labor is unto the Lord to bring honor and glory to him. It should be our, our work ethic and our school ethic and the things that we do should be unto the Lord, not just for a job, just not for a promotion, just not for some money. But, man, I get to work for the Lord. I get to do this for God. 
and we should be excited about it. We should have that attitude. Sometimes I see people that show up for work and they have this woe is me attitude like, oh, I got to go to work today. You know, I didn't realize that there was a six o'clock in the morning a.m. on the clock. I didn't realize I had to get up that early. And you have that attitude like, oh, no, I got to be here. This is such. But our work is unto the Lord. And sometimes we forget that. We get so caught up in our job and miss what the Lord has for us. Those opportunities that we have. But we should never forget our work is unto the Lord. He's called us to do those things, whether it's in our neighborhood in our place of work, in our school, wherever we may be, those people that we run into, we have so many great opportunities. And so often we get so busy doing our stuff, we miss those opportunities. And those ministry opportunities that come in the middle of the night, those phone calls from the hospital or the funeral home or someplace else that interrupt my schedule, sometimes I think, oh, that's my schedule. But you know what? I am so glad I would rather have God interrupt my schedule and be on his schedule than be on my schedule. Now just let that soak in for a minute. Because we all have a schedule, right? We all got everybody's got plans for the afternoon. Everybody's got plans for tomorrow. Everybody's got plans for this next week. Everybody's got plans. Everybody can take a plan. But would it be okay if God interrupted your schedule for something that he wanted you to do? Would it be okay if God said, hey, instead of taking care of your lawn today, how about if you go help your neighbor next door? You know, they just got out of the hospital. What about letting God interrupt your schedule? So often we get so busy doing our stuff. And if you're too busy for what the Lord has for you, you're too busy. You're way too busy. And which really leads us into the next point is that, you know, God rested, right? Everybody knows that. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, God did the creation. He spoke into being. He spoke into the earth. He spoke in the land and the sea and the animals. He spoke in, and all those things. And on the seventh day, he rested, Right? We know God wasn't tired. It wasn't like, hey, I need a nap. Not like me. He, he rested. He wasn't burned out. He wasn't exhausted. He rested. And we see it throughout the Old Testament as well. In the Ten Commandments, what does God give Moses? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall you work and do all your labor, but the Sabbath day is unto the Lord. A day of rest. Even as the children of Israel wandered through the wilderness for 40 years and they got manna from heaven. Remember what would happen? Six days they would get manna. On the sixth day they would get a double portion because the seventh day was the day of rest and they weren't to go out and collect manna. A day of rest. How do you rest? How do you rest? How do you take time from work stuff and rest without it you'll be burned out most of us work five six seven maybe days a week we seems like with our job but what do you do with the lord's day what do you do with the sabbath day what do you do with a day of rest how do you rest If God didn't have to work 24-7, I don't think we need to either. And if we do, we'll be burned out for sure. Labor, be a good disciple of Jesus. Work hard, take a day of rest. Now let's talk about the real work. What about the labor of love? What about the labor of loving others that aren't very lovable? What about loving those that just get under our skin? Does anybody have anybody that just gets under their skin that just really bug them? And you can't say your spouse, I'm sorry. You say your kids, but not your spouse. 
What about the labor of love? Going the extra mile, giving forgiveness, extending love to someone who doesn't earn it and doesn't for sure deserve it, but because of God's love in you, you forgive them. The labor of love. It's the labor of dropping everything to help somebody in need. It's going above and beyond what normal people would do. When you're a disciple of Jesus, you're willing to go above and beyond out of the labor of love. And then, what about the labor of prayer? Think about it. Prayer, the model that Jesus gave us where he fasted for 40 days and nights, right? That, that sounds like labor. Uh, how many nights did he pray all night, right? Throughout the New Testament. Uh, the night that he's arrested, doesn't he pray and drops of blood come? He's sweating and pouring out his heart to the Father and praying for his disciples so much. It sounds like labor to me, uh, praying for his disciples and for us. When was the last time you had a labor in prayer? And I'm not talking about the two-minute prayer. I'm not talking about the sentence of prayer. I'm not talking about in the car, oh, I saw somebody, so I prayed for them for two, 20 seconds or anything like that. I'm talking about laboring in prayer over something that God's laid on your heart. What about that? Most of us don't think of prayer as labor. It's just an event that we do. Had a great time last week praying around the schools. It was so good. Uh, besides praying around the school, I got to pray with some people uh, out in the playground. It was amazing. It was the best part of my whole day last Sunday, uh, praying for someone else. When was the last time you took time to pray for someone else? Not your own needs. Not what I need. Not what I want to do. Not about me, but for them. I don't care if it's a physical need or a spiritual need or whatever type of need. What about laboring in prayer for others? So the questions I have for you is, don't be a lazy bone, right? We saw that throughout the scriptures. We're not to be lazy, but we're to work hard. We're to serve the Lord with enthusiastic and be excited about it. And we are to serve the Lord. So this week, how will you serve the Lord enthusiastically? How will you serve the Lord with a great attitude and a big smile on your face, doing something for the Lord? How will you serve the Lord this week enthusiastically and how will you labor in prayer this week how will you labor in prayer that person that God lays on your heart that event that opportunity how will you take some time to pray and spend with God praying for that situation and then the third one how will you rest how will you take the Sabbath the Lord's Day and rest Rest your heart, rest your soul, rest your mind. If the Lord said that we should rest, we should rest. And that work, that yard work that I need to do, it'll be there tomorrow. You know that, don't you? It's okay. No one will call the neighborhood police and say, you know what, that didn't get done today. No, it's okay. How about taking some time today to rest in the Lord? Spend some time with Him. Go for a walk. Take some time and rest in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we want to work. We don't want to be lazy. We want to work for you. We want to be enthusiastic and serve you wholeheartedly. We want to bring honor and glory to you every step of the way. So Father, help us to be good employees and good servants of the King. Help us, Father, as we pray this week, that it would be more than just a sentence in prayer, but we would labor in prayer over the needs of those around us that you lay on our hearts. Help us, Father. And then, Father, help us to rest. Help us to find that time to rest and have our spirits renewed and refreshed so we can serve you enthusiastically every day. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have communion. Uh, you don't have to be a member of our church family to have communion. 
you have to be a disciple of Jesus, which means that your sins are forgiven, that you've asked Jesus into your heart, and that you intend to live a life pleasing to God. Uh, if you don't, and if you're not a disciple of Jesus, please don't take communion. But if you are, you're welcome to have communion with us. We're going to hand it out if you just hold it, and we'll take it all together uh, as a church family in just a moment. If the worship team would come at this time. Did you hear the words? Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. Why? Because of his love for us, that none should perish. He met with his disciples in the upper room and he took the cup, or he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He says, take and eat. This is my body, which is bruised and broken for many. Do this in remembrance of me. There's no forgiveness of sin unless the shedding of blood. And so Jesus goes to the cross and sheds his blood for us so we can be forgiven. So we can celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He met with his disciples in the upper room and after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, take and drink for the remission of sins. Father, we are so grateful for your amazing love, your grace and your mercy, going to the cross and giving us this remembrance, this communion time together. Thank you, Father. I pray that we would live a life that's pleasing to you as we remember what you did for us. Help us to work enthusiastic for the Lord, serving you every day. And Father, help us as we labor and love and pray for one another. But Father, also help us to find that time of rest, and renewal. Thank you, Father, for the Lord's day that you give to us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you could help us with the cups, there's some waste baskets by the tree. If you could put those in there and help us with the chairs. We're going to break down real quick, and then we're going down to the river. Mon Pa's uh, campgrounds, if you pull around the back behind the building uh, where the canoes come in, uh, we'll do the baptism there in just a moment. So thanks for being with us. Go and serve the Lord today. Amen. Hey, you've heard uh, Nathan's uh, testimony, how God has done a work in his heart and his life and uh, thinking more about others than himself. And uh, he realizes from Jeremiah that God's got a plan for his life. So that'll be our prayer in the days ahead that God would show him his plan yeah. and he would be faithful and obedient to what God's called him to do. Yeah. Grab my wrist. Nathan, Daniel Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. Hey, you've heard Ella's testimony of uh, how God has uh, spoke to her in the in the night and uh, watching and witnessing uh, Grace's baptism and uh, wanting to be uh, a child of Jesus and a disciple of Him. So uh, we're pretty proud of you, Miss Ella. Uh, give me your full name. Ella Reese Harris, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Hey, you've heard uh, Nathan's uh, testimony, how God has done a work in his heart and his life and uh, thinking more about others than himself. And uh, he realizes from Jeremiah that God's got a plan for his life. So that'll be our prayer in the days ahead that God would show him his plan yep. and he would be faithful and obedient to what God's called him to do. Yeah. Grab my wrist. Nathan, Daniel Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit.